Greetings, and welcome to another AG2 production. My name is Chief Warrant Officer 3, Jordan Murphy. The topic of this video is creating a custom list in SharePoint. The purpose of this video is to provide the viewer with the skills necessary to create a custom list in SharePoint. This video was created using SharePoint 2010. In order to complete the steps in this video, you must have contributor permissions or higher on your SharePoint site in order to accomplish this task. If you don't have contributor permissions, please contact your site administrator to get the correct permissions. The target audience of this video is the SharePoint beginner. In this video, I will provide a brief demonstration on how to create a custom list in SharePoint and several different field types you may find useful in your list. Upon completion of this video, the viewer should have a higher level of confidence in creating a custom list. It is not intended to be all-inclusive of the options available in a list. Let's begin. Step 1. You want to navigate to your SharePoint site. Click on Lists in the left margin of your screen. After this page loads, click the Create icon Choose List, Custom List, type in the name of your custom list. In this case, we are going to type OER underscore roster. Note, when naming lists and columns in your list, it is best practice to avoid using spaces. This will come into play later as you connect your SharePoint site to access. Click on More Options, Description. This is my OER roster. Create. From this view, click on the list settings icon. It is the icon that looks similar to a spreadsheet with a cog from a gear. It is from this view that we will create all of our columns. This includes adding a name, choosing a column type, providing a description if required, determining if the information in the field is required, allowing only unique values. This is helpful if you have a unique ID field that cannot have duplicates like a serial number or a DOD identification number, and providing the default value for your field. As you create different field types, you'll notice that not all fields contain the same number of choices for the settings. You'll need to adjust the additional column settings based on the needs of your organization. You will also see a section for column validation. We will not cover column validation in this tutorial, but we'll revisit that in an advanced options and settings video. So let's begin. We are going to create our first column. First column is soldier rank. This will be a choice field. And in the choices, just for illustrative purposes, we are going to type in Captain, Major, Lieutenant Colonel, and Colonel. And I'm going to copy this so we can use it later. Require this column contains information. Yes. Display using a drop-down value menu. Default value is Captain. OK. The next column we'll create is Raider. This will be a single line of text. Require contains information. Yes. OK. Next column will be Raider Rank. This will also be a choice column, and we'll use the same values previously typed. Require contains information. Yes. Default value Captain. OK. Now we will choose Raider Effective Date for our next column name. This will be a date and time field. Require that it contains information and choose date only for the date and time format. The next column we are going to create is evaluation through date, which will be another date and time field.
require that it contains information? Yes. OK. Now the next column we create is going to be a calculated column, which is the evaluation due date. A calculated column, as it says here, is a calculation based on other columns. What we're going to do here is we're going to choose the evaluation through date. So we're going to say equals, double click on evaluation through date, then add 15 days to that date. That is the date that we are going to have the evaluation due to our office. We're going to return the formula as a date and time, date only, choose OK. For the purpose of brevity, these are going to be the only columns we create. Obviously, if you were to create your own evaluation roster, you would add additional columns for senior rater, rank, senior rater, and any other fields you determine necessary for your organization. This is just a brief tutorial to show you how easy it is to create fields and columns within a SharePoint custom list. To get back to your list from this view, all you have to do is click on the name of the list and you will see here are the columns listed. I'll briefly add one item so you can see how the evaluation due date is calculated. It's going to be Captain Captain Jones. Let's see Nathan Jones. He's a captain. The Raider is James Smith. He is a Lieutenant Colonel. The Raider effective date is April 21st, 2015. Evaluation through date is July 15th, 2015. You can see here that it automatically calculated. Also, one other thing, you'll notice that I didn't label this as soldier name. How do we correct this? Title is a default column that is added to any list you create in SharePoint. In order to change the title of a column, you would come over here, click on List, List Settings, click on the name of the column, and we don't want title to be the name of this column, we want it to be Soldier Name no spaces again. Click OK. Click back on the name of the list here and you can see that it is now soldier name. And again you can add as many columns as necessary for your organization to properly track what inf whatever information you are trying to track. Stay tuned to AGTube for additional videos on how to use SharePoint and SharePoint integration into other Microsoft Office software. Thank you. Have a great day.